Well, what is going on guys? Luke here today, and we need to talk about SoFi, PayPal, and some shape stock that's called Block now. All three stocks have reported earnings, and SoFi and Brock crushed it, but that hasn't mattered one bit. They are now in the toilet, and PayPal didn't crush earnings at all, and it got a beat down and a half, but I'm not sure it would have mattered either for them. They were headed to the toilet regardless too. So let's discuss what is happening, is there more pain to come, and what you should do with these stocks, and I promise no more toilet talk. I just ask for you to gently tap that like button, and consider subscribing too, it's super easy to do if you like the truth without the hype. And are you against having a team of investors, including me, working directly with you as we navigate these ridiculously crazy times? If not, then you need to know the flash sale ends tomorrow to join the Market Insiders private group and the prices will never be lower than this again. You get full and direct access to me and a group of six and seven figure investors and you get access to four courses for free that teach you how to play and do evaluation, build up your cash, and you get to see my watch list with price targets, my buy and sell alerts. We got live weekly Q and A's and sometimes more than that, exclusive videos and a ton more. So check out the pinned comment. And before blasting me for promoting it, I have no ads, no sponsors. This is what YouTube pays me in a month. And I give half of that and half the group's proceeds to charity. So what the heck is happening with all these stocks? Well, as you can see right here, both SoFi and Block both beat earnings. Now we all know you can have an earnings beat and still fall afterwards. And that usually happens when the stock has an insane 20%, 40%, 80% move ahead of earnings. And guess what? You're probably going down no matter what happens on an earnings call when you have an 80% run just before their actual earnings call. But that wasn't the case with SoFi or Block. So what the heck is going on? And what about PayPal? Well, there are really two big reasons why they all dropped after their earnings call. The first, was all three have recently received downgrades by analysts. Those are actually huge downgrades and really increase the selling pressure quickly on these stocks. Now, personally, I could care less about this. I look at the numbers and do my own analysis. Analysts always push targets up during bull markets and down during down cycles like we have right here. They basically essentially follow the narrative at the time Unless there is something there that it kind of universally means the stock is going down, like a change in management or a large contract falling through or a supplier leaving or something like that. Otherwise, they just downgrade and upgrade based on short term trends and models that are intended for short term trading. But just for reference, the average price target for Block is $188, for SoFi it's $18, and for PayPal it is $184. So even with the downgrades, these stocks are currently trading at almost half the average price target, about you know 20% or so below the lowest price target on the street. And if these stocks hit the high price target, you would end up 120 to 150% from today's prices. And again, these are one year targets that analysts put out. So although I don't put a lot of stock in them at all, even the most bearish price target still makes these stocks return quite nicely in a year or so. Bottom line, Analyst downgrade still means the stock is going to sell off regardless of the price in the short term. But that's actually where the second reason comes into play with these stocks dropping after the earnings call. And that would simply be the market is just in a risk off mood overall. A much needed correction has happened and even a crash depending upon the metric you look at has actually happened. Regardless of which one you want to look at, it was much needed, but that means pain for stocks. And in typical Wall Street fashion, they overcorrected to the downside, just like they ran up prices well beyond reasonable on the upside about a year ago or so in a lot of these stocks. This is common. Wall Street always exaggerates to move up or down, and those swings have gotten actually more extreme as the years have kind of gone by. So you combine those two, and you have a recipe for a lot of selling and downward pressure on these stocks that will persist in the short term. So what the heck should you do in the meantime? I mean, how do you deal with these panic-inducing falls that seem to have no end in sight, which of course will then be followed by what essentially seems like a rocket ship back up when it picks up some momentum again, you know, just for a few days or so, or even a week, but for falling again with no end in sight again. How the heck do you deal with this roller coaster ride? Well, here is exactly what I am doing with these stocks. First, I will not panic sell during these downward moves that will come. I will just continue to hold my position and will look to add shares based on my price target set before emotions ever get involved. I understand the long-term opportunity in front of me and how absolutely stupid the pricing has gotten, especially for a stock like PayPal, in my opinion, given that they are just profitable and really a cash flow beast. Either way, keep the three to five year horizon in mind. 
That is where the long-term investor is looking. And second, I will not FOMO buy during the inevitable run-up or squeeze situation or whatever the heck happens when it goes on a quick run. I will simply buy based on my price targets and when the stock is running up and I feel like I'm missing out, trust me guys, we all feel FOMO, I will just step away and not buy based on emotions, but based on decisions made when I created my plan. I know those decisions were made with analysis, not emotions, and one creates wealth over the long term, the other creates scenarios where you basically buy high and sell low. So I personally like the first option better. And don't worry, if you're not comfortable doing any of that, DCAing into these stocks is worth looking into, or dollar cost averaging into these stocks is absolutely where you need to be looking. I have been saying for a long time that Wall Street, the media, and now a lot of YouTubers are thinking and making short-term moves. Sure, over the next week, owning oil stocks will probably make you more money than growth stocks like these. But I'm not a trader. I'm a long-term investor looking to build real wealth. I have no interest in getting in and out and market timing and all that other garbage like that. They are all losing strategies in the long run, and the data shows exactly that. And honestly, I don't need that kind of stress in my life anyways. I'm already losing all my hair, guys. But I wanna hear from you. Do you like any of these stocks? I mean, are you buying more or running for the hills? I'd love to hear what you are doing. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.